be greeted, Church of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. What a blessed day the Lord has given unto us. A day to remember what Jesus did for us. More than 2,000 years ago. A day to remember what God himself did for us through Jesus Christ. This morning, we are continuing with the topic we started on Sunday. The topic about Thanksgiving. And this one will be titled Thanksgiving Part 2. We shall read from Isaiah 9, two and 6. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2, reading in NV, it says, The people walking in darkness have seen a light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Six. Verse 6. For us a child is born, to us a son, a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Again, let us turn to Psalm 107 and read 1 and 2. Psalm 107. Verse 1 and 2, still reading in NIV, it says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story, those he redeemed from the hand of the foe. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning for the reading of your word, the sword of the spirit. Speak to us. Encourage us, guide us through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are continuing with the same topic about thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is very important to us as Christians. We are ministers of thanksgiving. We cannot do away with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving must always be on our lips. Coming from the bottom of our hearts. Going to God through our lips in Jesus Christ. On Sunday, if you can still remember, we spoke about giving thanks to God for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. By the direction from above, we focused on thanking him for the gift of life. Meaning the life here on earth. We were thanking him for the life that he is giving us or he has given us and he is continually giving unto us here on earth. This morning, as we are celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we are at the same time thanking God. Thanking God for the gift of salvation, Jesus Christ. The redeemed of the Lord are thanking God for the gift of eternal life. 
As you heard from where we read Psalm 107, we are the redeemed of the Lord. This very morning, the redeemed of the Lord are giving thanks to God for the gift of eternal life. Just as Isaiah indicated where we read in verse 2 we were walking in darkness. We were living in the land of the shadow of death. We were all destined for eternal death. But God rescued us through his son, Jesus Christ. The light of the world appeared on this very day more than 2,000 years ago. We were walking around in darkness. There was no hope for life. Darkness was before us. But the light of the world, Jesus Christ, appeared and rescued us from the hands of the enemy. And here we are today. We are called by his name because he allowed himself to be born through a woman created. What kind of humbleness is that? He allowed himself to walk the earth that he created. What manner of humbleness is that? There is nothing that we can give him as payment for what he did except to say thank you Jesus. Christians worldwide have gathered in different places on this day to celebrate the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day that marked the beginning of the redemption process of God. It is the day that marked the redemption plan of God, the beginning of the redemption plan of God. It is a day that brought about a turning point and ushered in a period of grace. The grace that removed us from darkness to light came on this very day. And it was ushered through the birth of Jesus Christ. Though it was completed on his cross. We are living in a period of grace as Christians. Man was completely lost. Completely separated from God, his creator. But grace located him. Grace went and found him wherever he was and brought him and placed him on firm ground. Grace went and located him and gave him a right standing with God. It is all the works of grace. It is not the work of men. Man was lost. And he could not save himself. But the grace of God came. Located him. And put him in right standing with God. And today we can stand and say. 
We are the redeemed of the Lord. We are Christians. Let us turn to 2 Corinthians 5 and read verse 21. Verse 21 in NIV it says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. In reconciling us back to himself, as the verse is saying, God made him who had no sin to become sin. So that in him we may become the righteousness of God. Righteousness is the gift from God is the grace of God that is attained through Jesus Christ not through our efforts no one can be saved through his own effort it is not possible God the Father in reconciling us back to him because he loved us even though we had sinned. He took his one and only son Jesus Christ and made him to become sin for us so that in him we can become the righteousness of God. Today we are called the righteousness of God. How did we receive that righteousness? Through Jesus Christ. Not through our own efforts. There is no amount of payment that men can give to God in return for his son Jesus Christ. No amount of payment is enough to pay back God. All that he requires from us is to give him thanksgiving. That is all that he wants from us. Once we are redeemed and we are the righteousness of God, we cannot pay him back. All that we can do is to thank him. And that is what Christ said we should do. This day, even all other days, there is nothing we can give him in return for what he did for us. Righteousness is attained through grace from God. Not our own efforts. Let us turn to Romans 3, 24 and 20. from, 20, from 21 to 24 from 21 still reading in NIV but now apart from the law the righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify this righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe there's no difference between Jew and Gentile for all we have for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God Verse 24, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Verse number 24, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. 
you will remember that we were called Gentiles. During the time of the law in Israel, the few, the Israelites, were in right standing with God through the law through what they were doing the sacrifices the countless sacrifices which is called the law but Jews and Gentiles they were not different we had all sinned we had all fallen short of the glory of God. We were separated from God. Although they were much better because the sacrifices they were performing under the law were bringing them back to God. But it was not enough. If it was enough, it would not have been repeated year after year. But thanks unto God, the grace of God appeared. The light of the world appeared. Jesus Christ on this very day more than 2,000 years ago we are now justified by grace through faith in Jesus Christ we are all justified by grace through faith in Jesus Christ salvation is the working of grace for you and I to find ourselves in right in a right standing with God is through grace. Not through our own works. Yes, after we have been located by grace and we have been made the righteousness of God our part is to continue and live holy. Our part is to continue and live a righteous life. But our own works cannot remove us from darkness to light. It is the grace of God that removes us from darkness to light. It is the grace of God that makes us to be in a right standing with God. It is the grace of God that makes us the righteousness of God apart from works. The only thing that is needed from us after we have been made the righteousness of God is to continue and to live holy. Is to continue to live a righteous life. That is very important. We have been made the righteousness of God by grace. We cannot afford achieve that through our own efforts. But our part from there is to live a righteous life. A holy life that will identify us with the one who rescued us from darkness. No amount of payment is enough to can pay back God for what he did for us. All that heaven requires from us is for us to give thanks to God. Is for us to worship him and give him thanks. It is for us to worship the King of Kings, Jesus Christ. And give thanks 
to him. Even on this very day, as we are celebrating his birth here on earth, Christ said, Give thanks unto God on this day for what he did for you and I. He said, Give thanks unto God for the birth of the Savior. Jesus Christ, meaning himself. Let us go to John 3, 16 and 17. John chapter 3, from 16 to 17, still reading in NIV. It says, For God so loved the world that he, he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Jesus Christ did not come to this world to condemn us. Jesus Christ did He came to save us. He came to reconcile us back to the Father. For that we need to thank him. Without the gift of salvation, eternal death was the destiny of mankind. We had no hope. Eternal death was our destiny. But thanks be to God for allowing his son to be born through a human being so that he can take away our sin so that he can be made sin for us in order for us to attain the righteousness of God in order for us to be called the righteousness of God Jesus had to be born on this earth we thank God for bringing his own son for the sake of us we also thank him Jesus Christ for allowing himself to leave heaven and come and be born through a woman and live like a human being and experience the pains and the sufferings that we go through here on earth. Whereas he never committed any sin. But it was all for the sake of us. It was all because of the love of God. Where we read 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only, his one, and only son. For the sake of redeeming us. So that whoever believes in him can be saved and not face eternal death. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, thank you, Jesus. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, thank you, Father. Isaiah said it. We were walking in darkness. We were walking in the land of the shadow of death. Destined for eternal death. But the light of the world, Jesus Christ, appeared on this day more than 2,000 years ago and rescued us. God manifested his love for mankind by sending his one and only son. What manner of love is that? Can any one of, of us send our son or our daughters to go and be a sacrificial lamb for the world 
It is not possible. In fact, we cannot even begin to do it. We are not worthy. Only the Lamb of God is worthy. Only Jesus Christ is worthy. There is no amount of payment, I repeat. There is no amount of payment that we can give unto God in return for what he did through his son Jesus Christ. There is no amount of payment. All that he requires from us is to thank him. Even today, he gave us this topic once more and, say, and said this time around you are thanking God for the gift of salvation. Jesus Christ. You are thanking God for the birth of Jesus Christ. As well as all the blessings that came with the birth of Jesus Christ. It is not only redemption. There are many blessings that came through Jesus Christ. We cannot begin to mention them and finish them. But he said specifically, on this day, go again and give thanks to God for the birth of the Savior, meaning himself, Jesus Christ. Give thanks unto God for the gift of salvation Amen. as well as all kind of blessings that came with the gift of salvation. As children of God, all that we can do to show our gratitude is to give thanks to God, which we shall do not, not very long. We shall all stand up and sing two worship songs. And after the worship songs, everyone will pray for himself, thanking God, not asking anything, but thanking God. We have ample time to ask whatever we want, but for this few moment, Jesus is requesting us just to thank God. God for the gift of salvation and all the blessings that came with the gift. Meaning all the blessings that came with his birth. His will worship center and viewers elsewhere. to us a child is born. To us a child was born. A son was given. And the government is on his shoulders. He is called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. And many more names. On this day, receive a blessed Christmas day. And a fruitful 2019. But above all, give thanks to God for the gift of salvation. Jesus Christ and all the blessings that came through him and all the blessings that came with him.